could go to JLC. You could hire an online consultant. You can take an online course to learn about a business technique or process or system. You can go get training somewhere. Some of it may be free, but to me, that the takeaway there is not as valuable as when you get 30 to 50 people in a room who all have the same mindset. They all have mutual goals. Um, they want to be there. They're willing to help. They're willing to share their experience. To me, that's where the value lies. Holy cow, it feels like it's been a long time since I've sat here and recorded a podcast. Um, it's a busy time of year. We we just recently, I guess this past Monday, was the Memorial Day holiday. So we are away for the holiday. The girls, both girls, are in um, the middle of softball right now. So that's full swing. No pun intended. Um, I have a couple of jobs landing all at once. I have a job going on right now. It's just it's chaotic. I've been traveling for work, um, doing more social stuff. I was supposed to actually be away this next week and that got bumped for three more weeks, just needing a little bit more time, uh, on the job to be able to go shoot what we have to shoot. So life's been crazy. Um, I took last week off. I meant, I intended to get in to record a midweek. It just didn't happen. Too many things going on. And then we were going away for the holiday, we had some softball games rescheduled and they got bumped till Friday night. So it was uh, just a busy week. I didn't have a chance to get in and do it. I thought I would be able to get it done. I didn't get it done. So I'm sitting here now getting it done. Um, <clears throat> but I hope everyone had, this will probably come out a little bit later, but I hope everyone had a nice holiday. We again took off Saturday morning, typically, if we're going to the lake, which is. It's up in um, Green County, New York, which is kind of near the ski mountains. It's like a three and a half hour drive. So we typically, we either take an extra day um, or try and get up there early just because it's a long ride with kids. iPads make it way more convenient, Um, but it's a bit of a long ride. So we try and make a long weekend out of it. So we ended up staying until Tuesday morning rather than Monday because we weren't getting up there until Saturday in the afternoon by the time we got everyone packed up on the road. Um, And we came home Tuesday because the girls had a delayed opening. So I'm just getting back into things. Um, But uh, it was a good it was a good weekend. We had great weather the first couple of days. The water was actually super warm. Usually you're not swimming around Memorial Day, um, but the water was very warm. Took the girls out tubing, took the girls out fishing. I missed two decent sized largemouth bass that did the old jump flip flop off my hook. The first one, I may or may not have set the hook properly. The second one, I certainly set the hook. And this was a decent-sized bass. And he or she just straight busted off of my hook. Um, And Rachel was like, good thing that you're not trying to court me because you just lost two fish in a row. Um, But I hadn't been fishing in about a year. Um, but yeah, we had a good weekend. The weather was good Saturday, Sunday night. It started to rain and then rained on and off Monday, but it was nice to get away. Um, just disconnect from work a little bit, turn the phone off, do what you want to do. Uh, and then again, got back Tuesday game, Tuesday night work, Tuesday, uh, plumbers on the job today. Just life's crazy. Doesn't seem to slow down. Um, but yeah, it was a it was a good good weekend. Heading into summertime, girls will be out of school here shortly, and then get them in camp and uh, doing it all over again. But softball should be wrapping up here shortly, which is going to make life a little bit easier, a little less complicated. Summer break, girls don't have to get out of the house for school. Um, it's a little bit easier here, even though they're home a little bit more. Let's see what I have going on today for all of you. Ah, I remember now. Um, 
So I'm sure many of you had seen a couple of weeks ago, I was in Minneapolis for the Contractor Coalition Summit. So if you all don't know what that is, you can go to their website. And let me make sure that I have this right right now. Um, where did my page go with that on it? I'm gonna have to, let me pull up a new one. Um, so contractor contractors coalition summit.com contractors is plural. Um, you can find out what's going on with them, but basically Morgan from, um, construction to style, Nick from NS builders and Brad from AFT created this summit must be a year or a little bit more ago uh where they are selling tickets to an event um and then they're getting everyone together they're hosting event they're doing some fun activities and then they are having everyone sit down for a day and a half two days uh definitely two days worth of educational content so if it's business related marketing related construction related whatever it may be um they're hosting these events at cities all over the country. So they had been saying that they wanted to have me come. Obviously, uh, I'm close friends with all of them, um, especially close with Nick, being that we have a business together. Um, there's my page that I had lost. It was hiding in the bottom bottom right corner. Found it. Um, so they've been asking me to come out for a while now. And... Again, as I alluded to earlier, life is crazy. There's always something going on. And if nobody forces you to do something, sometimes it doesn't happen. So this event was a little bit different. Before the event actually started on Friday night, they kicked it off with a live podcast. So they had myself, um, Nick, we had Brad, and then we had Mark Williams from the Curious Builder podcast. And we did a live podcast event. So they had us at a shared space. It was really cool. It was open bar. They had a live jazz band, which was pretty dope. And then they had this table. It was a a full-size table. Like, you know, you ever hear of charcuterie board? This was a charcuterie table. Um, And then they had past food. Again, live music. And they had this uh, network time to network, everyone to meet each other. And then they had a live podcast where we ended up polling our audience and asking them what questions they had for us. And then we went through and we answered all their questions. Then we opened up and had some more questions thrown at us after it was over. Uh, just helping people out any questions they may have about us, about our business, give them a little bit more insight and really what I, what I realized after the fact, and I don't think that they even realized this until I hopped on a call with Morgan is like this, this preliminary event, getting everyone together in a social setting. Yeah, it's business related, but it, it really lets everyone get to know each other, socialize a little bit and let their guard down. And I think it makes for a much greater experience for the weekend. So speaking with Morgan, um, they, oh, a lot of these, so before the event, right, there's going to be one in Boston coming up. They invite people to tour some local jobs. So, um, Morgan and Mark are based out of Minnesota around Minneapolis. So it was an opportunity for them to tour some projects in the area. Uh, and they don't require you to do this. It's not something you have to do if you want to sign up for the coalition. And it does add some time to the trip and the event. But speaking with Morgan afterwards, she was like, I wish that we had time to integrate some sort of a roundtable. And I'm like, well, I just don't know how valuable that would be because like the, these house tours, getting everyone together before the event, the live podcast, creating a social setting for people to get to know each other, to network, to speak is the round table for me. And it, it's more effective because it's not this formal setting where it's like, hey, we're literally going to sit around and get to know each other. For me, that's super awkward. It's really difficult. To, it's like the first day of school or at a new job where they want you to stand up and, and say who you are. It's very awkward. It's very forced. It's very uncomfortable. It doesn't really create uh, an environment um, for me that allows people to open up, let their shoulders down and be vulnerable. And to me, an event like this 
is all about that vulnerability, all about asking the questions, the tough questions, um, being real with yourself about what your business needs help on, to be able to ask other people, to ask the host, to ask the presenters, whatever it may be. If you are uncomfortable or the audience or the participants, attendees are uncomfortable, it's not going to be as valuable and um, <clears throat> I think as effective um, in, in in asking the right questions and teaching people and being able to help really spread your knowledge that you have. Because I think that when people are open and when they're honest and when they're asking questions that in some other settings may, may wind up people passing judgment on what you're saying, I think when you're in an environment where you can put your ego aside and you can have these real conversations and you can um, be completely transparent about what your struggles are, where, you know, where you may have financial issues within your business, you're going, it's going to be so much more helpful to everyone involved there. And if people aren't willing to be open and they're not willing to be honest and they're not willing to dig into these aspects of their business, that, that may, um, it may be tough for them to touch on or or share with other people that they don't know. I don't think that that's as valuable um, as an event. So to me, the roundtable isn't super effective, um, but creating these, these tours that they're offering before the event, the live podcasts, the social... Um, the social event with the jazz band and the open bar and the hors d'oeuvres and food. To me, that's like the networking that you need to be able to create. It sets the tone for the rest of the weekend, right? Where it's before you get to the classroom, it's before the learning commences and everyone's getting to know each other. And to me, that, that um, alleviates some of the anxiety and it really, it gets people to be comfortable with each other and that to me is where a lot of the value lies in these events um the educational aspect of it is critical it's so important a lot of people are paying a lot of good money to go and learn things that are taught to you at these events and also you're provided with when when you leave all of um the teaching the presentations you know you have copies of all of that stuff you 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 can ask the questions. It's all there for you so that you're, you're paying to get access to that. But for me, so much of the value is going to come from the people who are there, the network, getting people together, right? You, you could go and you could go to JLC. You could hire an online consultant. Um, <clears throat> you can take an online course to learn about a business technique or process or system. You can go get training somewhere. Some of it may be free, but to me, that the takeaway there is not as valuable as when you get 30 to 50 people in a room who all have the same mindset. They all have mutual goals. Um, they want to be there. They're willing to help. They're willing to share their experience. To me, that's where the value lies. It's not necessarily in, hey, we're going to get up here and present. You can go see that at IBS. You can go see that um, at the Builder Show. And the takeaways there, to me, they're good, but they're limited. It's it's There's a certain amount of time. There's no networking before or after. It's so chaotic. It's so busy. Um, you... A lot of the people, including myself, who have presented, they haven't presented on this topic. They haven't interacted with their audience before. So it's a bit rigid. It's a bit stiff. It's not super personal. A lot of times there's not time for questions. So to me, the value is is really in the network, the community, and the people who are there and creating this environment and this experience that is it's over multiple days um, and, and you get to know these people and you get to experience these people, what their life's like outside of business, what their business is like. And then the questions, the answers, the perspective is so much more valuable because you have insight 
as to what's going on. There's there's a benchmark there and you, you can apply this to your business. Um, so my opinion of this event, it, it really, they're, they do it right. Um, it's a production from, so when I first got there, there was this like care package in my room and I was like, oh man, this is so nice. Like I came out, they've been trying to get me to come out. We had this live podcast event. So Morgan's like, you have to come out for the podcast event. So I initially was going to come out for the podcast and then fly home next day. But she's like, stay for the whole thing. We want to get you involved with this. So I did. Um, and I was like, so I get to my room and I'm like, there's this beautiful care package. First off, hotel, super nice. Um, I'd stayed there for an event before for them. Downtown Minneapolis is a really cool city, super quiet. Um, the hotel was amazing, top notch. Food there was great. Um, the stay was great. The amenities were great. And no kids was also great. But I get into my room and there's this care package. And I'm like, this is so sweet. Like, it's because they had me out here. Come to find out, everyone got this fucking care package. And I am not special at all. Um, but yeah, like from the day you walk in and you check into your room at the hotel and you get this care package and you start networking with these people. And then again, they have these house tours, which are not required, but I feel like they should be and they should be a mandatory part of this event because that's when uh, the networking starts. The The pressure isn't on. The anxiety has has a chance to dissipate before you get into this more formal educational setting. Um, to me, it's really important to get that done beforehand. And that may be uncomfortable for some people, right? It's like, I just want to go learn about my business, but you're going to learn so much more if you understand the perspective of the people who are there with you. And you can all be open and real and honest with each other. If you're uncomfortable with the, the people who are there with you, you're not going to get as much out of this. So that's why these house tours and these events before the event are so important and so critical in my opinion. Um, so, uh, Friday night was the live podcast event. Everyone got to know each other, hang out for a few hours. Everything was in walking distance of the hotel, walk back to the hotel. Some people hung out by the bar. Some people went up to the pool deck, um, hung out. I went to sleep. Um, and then the next day they start the education. Um, so they'll have you and they'll, they'll go through Nick and Brad presented, Morgan presented, um, Mark LaLiberté presented. So they have all of these unique models and these presentations that you sit down, you have breakfast, you sit down, they present, they go through slideshows. It's, it's, it's very interactive. People ask questions. You can ask questions unique to your business. It doesn't have to be a, a question that applies to everyone. You don't have to be afraid to ask questions. Um, there's time taken to answer questions adequately. There's plenty of time to get through the, the presentations and answer the questions and have it be a very interactive experience. Um, you have lunch and then you go into more teaching sessions. You work through these teaching sessions until you have a break where it's like, all right, let's decompress. That was a lot network a little bit. You have a couple hours to go decompress get changed, whatever you have to do, and then go out to dinner. And then from dinner until midnight or whatever time, everyone's hanging out. They're having a good time. Obviously, there's networking and business talk going on. But again, another opportunity to get to know these people, to develop these relationships, to understand more about people's businesses, to gain perspective, valuable insight. You're with these people who you've been with at this point now for a day and a half, two days, the questions that you may have been afraid to ask day one, now you're ready to ask. Um, <clears throat> it gives you access to so many of your peers, so many people in different markets, different businesses. The the perspective is just so dynamic. And it's so, it, it to me, was really neat to be able to have a conversation with somebody from across the country, somebody local to this area, and somebody from another part of the country um, all with different sized businesses, all with unique experiences, all brought into the business in a in a different way, and all, hear all of their perspectives as to um, 
what their opinion on different matters are, how they deal with certain things, and what you can take away from that business and apply towards your business. Um, <clears throat> so then, uh, what is this, Friday? Oh, no. Wait, hold on. I have to look at my schedule. It was, it was, uh, there was a lot going on. Let me actually look at, um, the upcoming schedule for Boston here. Let's see right here. Um, so the, as I take a quick hiatus from what I'm saying, uh, the next event, which is in Boston, local to Nick and Doug, um, is going to be September 27th through the 30th. So that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then wraps up Monday. Um, yeah, so then I guess I probably had a day off. So it was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. Um, so Friday and Saturday, all teaching, right? So you have two full days of the education. And then Sunday is, is kind of a brief go through everything, recap everything. Uh, recap everything that you learned over the course of the event. Any additional questions that you have, comments that you have, concerns that you have, um, just tying everything from the entire experience together to wrap things up. Um, again, so the so the second full day of education is going to have the same schedule as the first day, but obviously different topics. Um, and again, they could range from just construction processes, contract documents, managing customers, uh, client expectations, could be uh, a course on builder trend or project management, um, how to set up relationships with partners, vendors, with the world today. Um, there's a lot that goes along with that that you have to protect yourself from. <clears throat> um, financials of your business. Again, marketing, digital marketing, how to do all of those things. Um, <clears throat> and it, it all comes from a place within the industry. Somebody who's been doing this, somebody who has experience. And the great thing about this is now you have two dozen, three dozen other people in this room who also have their own unique perspective. So if there's a different perspective that you're looking for, or you need to compare yourself to a market that's more indicative of where you are, you have that opportunity, not necessarily just with the host who's presenting this. Um, so the two days of educational information and content, super valuable. Um, I think that there's there you could sit through this three, four times and still not get all the information out of it. It's just, it's jam packed. There's so much that you can learn, um, so much to know and so much information that realistically will pay back your investment immediately. Um, not to mention exponentially. So, I'm not a huge person to be able to sit and just be taught in a way where like, I don't like the classroom setting, right? It's tough for me to just sit and, and go through slides, but the interactive nature of these events make it pretty easy to sit and digest this content. Um, it's, it's very open forum. It's very flowing. There's breaks. There's coffee, there's snacks, there's food. You can hop out if you need to take a call. You can be working at your computer. You can ask whatever question you are. It, however you see fit to learn, you can do it here and, and it's going to be applicable to you. Um, the dinners were amazing. Um, I would assume that Morgan is probably the one choosing where to go and finding the places because they were very fun amazing food. Uh, everyone was super nice. It, they basically broke the group up into tables of like six or seven people. So you can pick who you want to sit with. You have conversation with all of these people. You get to know them better. You get to know them at breakfast. You get to know them at lunch. You get to know them at dinner. And then you get to hang with them after dinner before everyone gets to bed. 
Um, so if there's somebody who you see their business or you know them or you have questions or they had a, a really pertinent question or a question that resonated with you during the event, you can have some time to go and ask them or dig into it deeper or learn more from them and really gain from their experience and their knowledge. It's not an inexpensive event. Everyone's there very serious about their business. They have a similar insight, a similar mentality. Um, they want to be there. They want to help. They want to learn from you and they want to better the industry. So there's no lack of learning. There's no lack of knowledge. There's no lack of conversation. And again, it's everyone wants to be there. So you're not getting the ego. You're not getting the attitude. You're not getting somebody who feels as though they're like elite and not willing to help. Um, so it, it really, it was a really cool, amazing experience. So at the, at the end of the event, I guess, Doug, well, Doug from Motif has been there. Um, they have people, Doug being one of them, documenting this entire show um, for shared content, for content for you guys. They also um, will take headshots for you and your business so that you have them. Um, but at the end, Doug interviewed people who are comfortable being interviewed. And they asked, you know, what's one word that you could use to describe this event. And if there's anyone who knows me, although I do it a lot, I'm not the most social person. Um, I don't absolutely love being in front of a camera and I really don't love being put on the spot. So this checks all the boxes of shit that I actually hate. Um, but at least this with Doug. So I feel fairly comfortable in, in front of Doug. So initially I was like, there were so many things going through my head and it's, it's an, an overwhelmingly good experience. But the the one thing that came to mind was inspiring. Like that was the word to me. Um, and it, it was similar to that feeling that I got when I first found a group of people on social media that I could connect with outside of social media where it's like, oh, damn, I found my people. Like I found people who understand. They walk, they talk, they think, they breathe like me. They want so much for themselves in this industry and what they're doing and to immerse yourself in this group of people um, is really exciting. It's really cool. And it really is inspiring. It's inspiring to see how many people are committed to the industry. And I, I think five, 10 years ago, when I look at what I just did and this contractor coalition summit and, and what it stands for now, like to me, this was a really small, small portion of the industry, um, like a microcosm of the big industry. Um, and now that like it's grown, I think that it's less of this, this small little microcosm of the industry. And this is becoming more of the standard for the industry. Like there's more people like this than less people like this. And, it really stands for something more. Um, and I think that this is the way that the industry is going to be headed, in my opinion. I don't necessarily know if from a numbers perspective, it's going to grow massively. But I feel like the people who are here, it's a bit of a natural selection process where it's like the people who want to be here want to be here. It's not necessarily the easiest. It's not necessarily the most lucrative. There's things that you can do to make it easier and to make it more lucrative. But like the people who want to be here are here because they want to be here. And I think that this is this is where our industry is trending. And events like this reaffirm that for me, um, that there's a lot of people who really want good things for this industry and are, are genuinely devoted to this industry. Um, and it was really cool to be around such a large group of people who shared the same sentiment um, and, and all wanted to be there to help each other and support each other. Um, <clears throat> all of this being said, moving forward after my experience, I have decided that this is something that I want to spend more time um, participating in and helping with. So the first summit that I will be a full part of is going to be this this Boston summit 
that's coming up. Again, you can check out contractorscoalitionsummit.com. Um, it is currently on sale, but that's September 27th through 30th, 2024. Um, that's the first thing. There also is already the KBIS and IBS happy hour that is already on the schedule for 2025, February 24th. So these things have been selling out super fast and the space is very limited because after experiencing this, I understand why it needs to remain an intimate experience. Um, it We need to ensure the right people are there to create and, and to provide the value for the people who are putting up the investment for this. Um, so it definitely needs to be a certain level of person. I understand why it needs to be this intimate experience and what the value is there. Um, but another huge takeaway from this for me while sitting sitting in and, and witnessing and experience this event is how many similarities there are. And I knew this, but how many similarities there are between my business and Nick's business, my business and Brad's, mine and Morgan. Between my business, everyone's business, it doesn't necessarily matter how big you are or how small you are, right? You could have $500,000 in sale. You could have $5 million in sales. You could have $50 million in sales. There's, there's principles that apply to Brad's business that apply to my business and vice versa. When the three of them initially approached me about, hey, is this something that you want to be a part of? I struggled to see what I could bring to the table, not only for the participants, right? Because there's these three other great people in the room already. Um, but like, what can I bring to the table for the for the co-host as well? Um, if I'm going to do this, I want to carry my weight. I want to add value to this experience for these people, for the attendees and for the host. And what can I do? Like, what does my, how can my market support this? Um, it's a considerable investment for people to go there. It's an investment of my time to participate in this. But I realized that it doesn't matter if you are a subcontractor, if you're a designer, if you are a, a uh, single member LLC. Again, if you're doing $500,000 in sales or you're doing uh, 50 million in sales, there's takeaways from this event. There's, there's so many opportunities to network, to build your business, to learn, to inspire yourself to help elevate this industry. Um, and being there and witnessing and listening to the host and listening to the conversation and the questions and how much perspective I felt as though I had to offer um, based on if it was something Brad and Nick and Morgan were presenting on or based on a listener question, there's unique experience that I have that's unique to me, but also can transcend my business and be applicable to other business. And so many of these attendees and so many things that Nick does and that Brad does and that Morgan's does Morgan does that I realize yeah I actually do have a lot to offer um I think that my followers my supporters the people who do what I do really could benefit from this and that was something that I was concerned with, with initially looking into this was like hey is this a fit for me? Can I offer value to my supporters? Is this something that my supporters could participate in? And is this something that I can give back to these three co-hosts who have already spent so much time and effort getting the groundwork and the foundational work in place for this? And after being there um, and spending the weekend and, and meeting so many people and getting to experience this firsthand and realize that there were so many times where I wanted to just speak up and be like, Hey, in my situation, this is how I deal with that and be able to offer my insight and my experience. Um, I really do think it would be valuable to so many people. So that 
like getting out there, experiencing this and understanding that there's a market for this and that the people who already support me can really immensely benefit from something like this, that it's not just, this isn't reserved just for these elite builders, for home builders. It can be an owner operator. Um, it can be somebody who is mid-sized. It could be a subcontractor who manages a couple of people. It could be a project manager. It could be a designer. So many people can benefit from this. And I realized that, and that, that really, um, was imprinted on me through this experience. So I'm really excited to be hopping aboard. Um, we're trying to fine tune the integration, what that looks like, what my roles will be, um, what the first few educational, uh, presentations are going to be on. I'm really excited to be able to dig into this and to be able to offer as much of my experience as possible. Um, <clears throat> I've always really enjoyed sharing my experience. Um, as I became more confident in what I was doing and confident just in my own skin, comfortable in my own skin, I realized that so many people experience the same struggles that I do um, and the same successes and are working through the same problems as I have on my scale and, and on much higher scales and that everyone can benefit from what we're doing. So I'm really excited. I've always been excited to be able to give back, to help teach, to just open up the conversation um, and get people together to help better and elevate this entire industry. And I think that that's what this is all about. And again, I don't think that like what's going on now is this, this really small microcosm of the industry. I feel like it's, it's getting bigger. It's really gaining traction. It's growing. And this is going to become the majority of the industry. I think that this is going to be the standard and that it's not going to be this small subset of the industry, um, anymore, or like this, this small piece of a bigger puzzle, um, I think that this it's going to continue to grow and really encapsulate most of the industry. And I think that the people who are left standing are going to all be really great people who want really great things and are really willing to support each other. And that that is what this Contractors Coalition Summit was for me, um, <clears throat> all really summed up in a bottle. It's just people who want great things for each other and the industry and want to better themselves. Um, <clears throat> one other thing that I spoke with Morgan about was how oftentimes events like these can be really difficult to step in and really show all your cards and be open and let your guard down and have people help you. And the environment <clears throat> and I don't know exactly how they did it, but the environment and the setting and the camaraderie here really afforded everyone who was there, including myself, the opportunity to throw, throw their ego out the door, um, really roll up their sleeves, show all their cards and be vulnerable and help each other. And that, that, to me is the big difference. I've never experienced that at any sort of social meetup with contractors at any sort of sit down formal training seminar at any of our presentations at IBS at, at JLC, um, other talks that we've done different mediums from which I've tried to educate and teach and share my experience. This really was different. Um, and, and it, I'm sure that there's a lot of reasons that play into that and make it make it such, but it was really cool to just see a lot of people who weren't looking to um, showboat or stand on their soapbox, just really wanting to help and understanding challenges that we all face and how everyone's looking to uh, surmount those challenges and, and progress in their careers and, and find, um, an industry that can support what we want. Uh, and that, that was really cool. So I hope that all of you at some point get a chance to attend one of these events. Um, 
if you want to and there's a question that you have or you're a concern that you have you can reach out to me tyler at trghomeconcepts.com you can also hop on the website they have an instagram as well but contractors coalition summit.com you can check out what the upcoming events are you can check out what the schedule is you can see um, basically what's in store for your for you if you were to sign up for one of these events um but the the boston one is live now you can register for that um you can um also if you're concerned with the financial aspect of it you can sign up for a a payment plan so you can disperse the payments so it makes it a, a little bit easier for you again not an inexpensive investment but when i look at what i experienced and i look at where i come from where i am now what my business looks like um initially i wasn't sure how i fit into um into this event and how my listeners fit into this event and now after the fact and understanding it and really believing in it it makes sense to me and i understand that and this is something that i would definitely recommend anyone do um so definitely check it out on their website what else is going on uh as always thank you to all of my listeners my supporters i have had so many consulting calls in the past couple of months and i absolutely love it um it's the same thing as here i really enjoy getting to speak to people i get i i enjoy speaking to people multiple times um i i am so excited when somebody new reaches out and wants to hop on a consulting call and I get off these consulting calls and it's so nice to get the follow-ups where it's like, hey, I implemented this. I changed that. I tried doing this. I don't know how I ever did this before. I'm making this much more money now. I'm not doing this, which I used to do for free. Just these simple things that even an hour of your time um, again, it's the same thing. Like you're going to recoup these costs so quickly and people are like you should be charging more money for this and i'm like i guess i can but i also it's like it's more than me having my tool belt on and it's helping other people out and like i'm doing it mostly on days where i'm already in the office so it's a way for me to be able to give back to make a little bit of money for that day but also to like better my skills extend my reach and help people who really want help with their business or with what they're doing or just some insight as to how i'm doing things so i do want to thank everyone i've been scheduling one or two of them a week it is first come first serve shoot me an email tyler at trghomeconcepts.com if you want to get on the schedule um again i try not to book out too far in advance just because it puts pressure on myself and I, I want to be committed to these. I want to have the energy to do these. I don't want to sit down on a phone call if I'm not in the mood to sit down on a phone call because you're paying me money and I really want it to be valuable to you. And selfishly, I want to feel productive with what we're doing, not just not just putting money in my Venmo account. Um, so it is limited as far as the amount of spaces I have um, and how many people I can get in per week. But I really do enjoy these. It's been something that I've added to my weekly basis that has been um, just really gratifying for me and really exciting to see like simple things that I struggle with for so long that people are putting in place and immediately making their lives better, uh, making their businesses more profitable or demanding change out of them because now they're they're really looking at their self from like a clearer more realistic vantage point um so yeah thanks to everyone who's been doing that so that wraps up my midweek uh i had a blast out in minnesota i thank you to everyone who brought me out there it was so great to meet everyone it was great to see familiar faces good to hang out with doug from motif um many people i worked with before there were so many people from the anderson team who's obviously a sponsor of this podcast there were so many people from the builder trend team obviously a sponsor of this podcast um so many other companies that i've worked with and people that i've seen and met before it really it was a good trip work trips 
our work trips um and this one was different uh i didn't necessarily go into it thinking it was different and now that i have i understand um and i'm excited to hop on board and i'm excited to be a part of this and i'm excited to bring a lot of value to everyone who comes to these events to the co-hosts um and to this industry as a whole So that wraps this one up. I appreciate you guys hanging around. Hope you had a good holiday and I will catch you next week.